Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media here, and today we've got a new installment of the Reviews Roundup where we go over uh, sort of albums and EPs and mixtapes and stuff that I have reviewed in the past month. The past month being September 2023. I'm a little behind on stuff and hoping I can get everything done for the year-end lists. Um, so uh, let's just hop into it. Start off with FN's Cheap Thrills. There's something magical about this album, as well as FN's overall production, uh, that teeters this fine line between ab abrasive, ear-shattering dubstep and pleasing synth runs. Uh, everything just works. After a multitude of EPs throughout his career, Effin has thankfully saved all of his best for his debut album. He even manages to play around with some more mellowed out tunes throughout the track list. Uh, well, I didn't find any individually standout tracks, although I really, really, really liked It's Gone at the end there. Um, I, I did love the overall tone and consistency of this record, and it will score a bow tied 7 out of 10. Then we've got James Blake playing Robots Into Heaven. That was nominated for a Grammy for Best Dance Album. Uh, but James Blake is back with another electronic forward-focused project, uh, residing primarily within the kind of future garage soundscape, I would say. Uh, this album is visceral, harrowing, mechanical, and serene in a hodgepodge of kind of high-quality electronic instrumentation. Stylistically, uh, distinct from his last decade of production, Playing Robots Into Heaven is a callback to James Blake's earliest and finest tunes. And it'll score a bowtie 7. Then we've got Cone Sound, led by Ancient Light. Uh, this record is a beautiful melding of raw electronic sounds with classical symphonic instrumentation. Uh, as a continuous and lyricless album, led by Ancient Light is an, exp is an experiential listen. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, the mysterious, intimate tonality of this project is further conveyed by how the tracks tend to kind of break into a more explosive soundscape uh, when the storyline calls for it. Uh, this is a truly polished and magnificent record, and this will score about tied eight. Then I've got Olivia de Rodrigo with Guts. Um, I think this will be looked on as a defining album in pop music, and I'm sure of it. Uh, Olivia has stunned the industry with top-of-the-line vocal range, songwriting, and depth. Uh, bouncing around from alt-rock to acoustic ballads, uh, Olivia finds herself as one of the leading voices for the youngest generation as she simultaneously writes for an older audience as well. Uh, it's like going back to kind of watch old kids' movies and realizing how you, how much stuff you missed when you were younger of all these like innuendos and, and writing that's actually for adults. This album has that in full force. Um, there's so much brilliance in this record, and this will score a bow tied 8 out of 10. Uh, and then we've got Rami with Mid Air, uh, the gayest dance pop record of 2023. Uh, Rami is very explicitly sharing her uh, experiences with the same-sex attraction, love, and the eventual realization that, um, in the end, it doesn't really matter what others think. Uh, there is some really strong supporting Deep House production from various producers that keep this record strong. But my biggest gripe with the record, though, is that uh, Rami has some incredible songwriting and storytelling for like half of the track list. Um, some tracks are beautiful ballads of love, while others are just blander pop choruses. So, at the score, Bowtie 6. Then we've got the Chemical Brothers for that beautiful feeling, also nominated for a Grammy. Uh, the Chemical Brothers are keeping old school electronic alive and well. Uh, in an album full of expansive tracks and progressive house tunes, this feels like both a modern and nostalgic record. Uh, in particularly, I love the kind of daft. Daft Punk samples and melodies that were early on in the first couple tracks of this record. And the score, a bow tied seven. Then we've got Zoo, Days Before Grace. Uh, Days Before Grace is very much uh, a Zoo EP, uh, releasing the first bunch of tracks for an album of an, with an EP beforehand like this is. Uh, and you kind of got those darker moods and tracks that always have that kind of okay singing from Zoo throughout, I would say. Uh, this is just very much a Zoo EP. And this is score, a bow tied six. Then we got Dea with Emerald Den EP. Uh, Dea's Emerald Den uh, focuses hard on a specific niche in an interesting twist of like kind of kawaii future bass and like color based dubstep to some extent. Um, the EP is bright and colorful, uh, but lacks tonal variation or gripping melodies for me personally. Uh, it's a decent project, but not one that resonates too much with me. And I will score it a bow tied six. Then we've got Drulu, The Art of Change. Uh, the Art of Change is simultaneously more of the same and a whole new direction uh, for Drulu. Uh, with the change of a duo becoming a solo act, as well as this, as this technically 
and technically not being their debut album. The first one, no matter perspective, was like an anthology album, and so that was just a bunch of EPs together. And so this was this is really the debut, but it's not the debut album. It's kind of confusing, but um, I feel like this project is a mixed bag of generally solid ideas. Uh, the production throughout is still the kind of the Drulu classic with the uh, light and chimey hybrid trap tones, uh, just with a layer of kind of cliche voice memos throughout the whole runtime there too. Uh, even so, there is a bit more variety from Drulu with an uh, Drulu's norm with a couple of drum and bass tunes sprinkled throughout. Uh, this is one of the weirder projects uh, where I think individually the tracks are better than the collective whole, uh, but it will score a bow tied seven. Then we've got Kayflay with Mono. Kayflay's fifth studio album is her most vocal forward to date, relying uh, more uh, so on songwriting than ever before, which is a shame because this is some of her weakest writing yet. Uh, opting in for a more pop rock tone instead of her more instrumentally alt rock focused style, uh, Mono uh, feels like Kayflay. It feels like a, a copycat Kayflay record. It feels like what someone would produce to sound like a Kayflay record. Um, the track list is ultimately full of forgettable and lackluster tunes, in my opinion. This is score bow tied five. Uh, then we've got Samplifier with the Firestorm EP. Uh, this is pretty much as average as average rhythm EPs get. And that's it. It'll score bow tied four. Uh, then we've got San Holo with existential dance music after a personally disappointing second album. San Holo is back in full force with his third, uh, bringing back his signature future bass style. This record feels like a true follow up to album one. Even with the parallel melodies and structures between those two, uh, the subtle callbacks have really greatened my listening experience, especially when I've listened to a ton of album one. Uh, well, I don't think the track list has any individual standout tracks. Son Holo's consistency and sonic cohesion are on full display. Existential Dance Music is also the perfect title as the record is essentially ex like an exploration of the mind just to the backing of some dance beats. And this is Corbo Tide 8. And we got Whales Two Worlds Apart. In what I can only describe as a scattered mind put into the sounds of generic dubstep, uh, Whales Two Worlds Apart is undoubtedly his weakest project to date. At uh, 17 tracks and just under 40 minutes long, nothing feels cohesive about this record. Uh, as a listener, you're kind of merely jumping from one random idea to another uh, with no semblance of unity. Uh, this is what I would call ADHD, the album. And it's a score bow tied three. Then we've got Kim Petrus with Problematique. Uh, well, a much stronger record than her first 2023 LP, Problematique is ultimately just a bunch of generic dance pop and French house tracks, which is uh, an upgrade from the last. This is score Bowtie tied five. Then we got uh, 1788 uh, L with Alpha Plus. Uh, this is a pretty intense, highly electric record uh, with an engaging futuristic tone. Uh, in what could be the soundtrack for a fight from like a Blade Runner movie, uh, Alpha Plus is some of the best sounding uh, 1788 L I have heard, I think, period. Uh, despite the relatively short album, it packs a lot into its runtime. It'll score bow tied seven. Then we've got Inhuman with Arrival. Uh, while I tend to find some of the tracks to be a simple derivative of hard-hitting dubstep, a majority of the track list is enhanced by darker tones and moody storytelling. Uh, individually, there aren't many tracks that stole my attention, but collectively as an LP, this is one of the better dubstep projects out there in 2023. This will score about type 7. They've got Jaws, Wrath of the Wicked, uh, acting as the final installment of the Rise and Wicked albums, the three of those, uh, and also as a five-year anniversary to his debut LP. Uh, Wrath of the Wicked is a callback to a sound that originally put him on the map. Uh, that being said, I find this record to uh, sound more outdated than it does to sound like an actual callback. Um, crashing bass lines and distorted synths make for a classic listening experience, uh, but one that I would, uh, wouldn't really see myself enjoying a whole ton um, by itself, and one that I really feel like I need to be shoulder to shoulder with other people at a club or festival to really enjoy much of these tracks. But uh, I will score a bow tie to four on this one. Then we got Kylie Minogue with Tension, uh, one of the better dance pop records of this year to hit the uh, airwaves. Uh, there's just an inherently fun tone to the record that um, just gives throughout the entire runtime. It just gives. This album gives. And then it'll, uh, it'll score Bowtie 7. Then we've got Murata with Demogorg of Oblivion. Uh, this is the rhythm dubstep that I just can't get behind. Uh, I feel like a boomer, but it's really just noise to me. It's all just noise. Um, there are very few pleasing sounds or melodies, and with no real change in pace for the three tracks here, I, uh, yeah, and I, <laughs> don't get me started on Prex. Um, 
yeah, generally one of the worst singles I've heard in 2023. Um, but this will score about tied four. Then we've got Roman Silver with Dragonfly. And uh, yeah, I've been a pretty big Roman Silver fan over the last couple years. And I was very stoked to see him finally putting out a full length record. Um, but that being said, this project is a bit of a letdown for me. Uh, Roman Silver has mainly done away with this kind of funky and bouncy deep house niche for a more by the book standard house record. Um, in the end, Dragonfly was a bit of a letdown of expectations. And we'll score Bowtide 6. Then we've got underscores with wall socket. Uh, underscores went nuts on this record. Uh, some of her best production and songwriting yet. Um, any issues I had with her last record have been properly addressed and enhanced to the point that at times it felt like this is a completely different artist from the last record. Um, while I enjoyed the tracks with more kind of grandeur from Fishmonger, uh, better in isolation, uh, wall socket is relentlessly impressive from front to back. It'll score Bowtide 8. Then we've got Sam Gallatry under the illusion. Uh, after pumping out crazy consistent projects throughout his career to this point, uh, under the illusion is just a uh, surface level as you can get um, with Sam. Uh, the beats feel a little dry without life, and each of the four tracks here uh, would have been low lights on any other project of his. So I feel like this is a bunch of just th throwaway tunes on an EP, and they'll score Bowtide 5. We've got Midnight Kids, The Long Way Home. Uh, there isn't anything inherently bad about this record. It's just incredibly generic. Uh, in the world of melodic and melodic dubstep, there is a distinct sound structure and tone that, sends, that tends to find itself onto every project, and this record is pretty much that turned up to 11. Um, there is no time throughout my listening experiences where I went, oh, cool, this is, this is new. Uh, but it's not bad. It'll score about 10-6. Then we've got Must Die with Vampire Vampire Weapon Crimson, the EP. Uh, big yikes for me on this new EP. Uh, Must Die's abrasive, in-your-face, ear-shattering production is by far my least favorite of his. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not some heavy equals bad doomer here. I actually enjoyed his last two albums. Uh, but there's just something about this particular sound design for Must Die that uh, tends to offend my soul. Um, this ain't it. And this is Gorbo Tide 2. And finally, we've got No Taker with Echoes in Eternity. The No Taker debut album is officially here, and it's marvelous. Uh, no Taker's space-centric electro sound design has always had a soft spot in my heart, and uh, this record is some of his best. And as a continuous project, No Taker takes us on a journey throughout time and space, taking stops along the way to question if what we're experiencing is uh, truly real. Uh, if anything, it's the atmosphere of this record that draws me in the most. Uh, and yeah, while spacey tones have frankly been overdone, I think, in the EDM world, um, something about No Taker's approach to the style just still feels fresh to this day. And it'll score Bowtide 8. Uh, but that's been my uh, monthly reviews roundup. Let me know what you think of any and all of these EPs and albums in the competition below. Other than that, I am Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.